uh, our rival's name, by the way, is, um, I mean, what did we lose to? It was bullshit. We lost to literally no info. That's all it was. I mean, that's literally all it was. We, we could have never had the information we needed to actually prepare for Ursa Luna and a bunch of nonsense, okay? It was just not, it was it was bad. The run has officially started, everybody. Run 18 of the dude's lock. Surely this is the one, this is the run. We get a Cyndaquil to start, which means that this is good luck. Onyx comes in, we bubble beam, almost one shot it. Finish off the Onyx, Vulpix comes in. It hidden powers, we send in Barrow. We water pulse a couple times and it's dead. Water pulse one more time, GG. Easy Brock fight. Again, that fight is pretty much free. We are now guaranteed to absolutely destroy Misty's gym. Oh my gosh. I don't even have to level up Magikarp yet. I can just, I mean, well, I guess I could level up so Cup too. But like, this is, I mean, it's so free. With Lotad alone, you can basically sweep our whole team. So that plus Rosalia, plus Weepin' Bell, plus Lotad. Oh my God. This Misty fight's gonna be a breeze this time around. The run X, and it can have a space at the end, by the way. What if I just do this? Bang. How's the other encounters been so far? Relatively solid enough. The biggest encounters we've gotten, we get another, another Swablu, which pretty much guarantees another Erica sweep. Now that we know how her AI reacts to a, an Altaria. We also have our backup with a Staraptor, as soon as we can evolve this thing fully. We started with a Johto Pokemon. So we have a Quilava, which is again, gonna be very helpful for Erica. We are gonna get a Roserade, assuming we make it that far. So as long as we get something good from like Diglett's Cave and get a couple good Pokemon with Bulldoze and whatnot, we should be in a pretty good spot. All right, quick Misty fight should be pretty easy. I will try to do a belly drum strat here. Ooh, that's not gonna work. That's fine. Okay, he's being kind of cringe. We're not gonna white out, dude, don't worry. See, eventually they just throw anyways. GG. <laughs> not a worry. The Frogadier was just being a little more cringe than normal. A few more crits and you'd be done. You have to remember I still had Ludicolo in the back who can basically solo that gym. Okay, so we hope that this EV is good. That's what we hope. It is awful. Holy shit, that's bad. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Why are all of our IVs so bad this run? It's like the only thing that's been killing us is these IVs. It's so bad. Oh, I'm gonna have to farm so many freaking nuggets, dude. Oh my God. Getting to Sabrina in a run is dope though, after all the BS. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, I feel pretty confident in my ability now that we know how to like farm money and we have a pretty good grasp of what we're up against and how to like properly EV train certain Pokemon. Like I feel pretty solid about like what our consistent like baseline for runs is gonna be. The biggest hurdle I think is just forever going to be Surge. Every run Surge is going to be a big hurdle for us just because of the fact that we we can't do any EV or IV fixing beforehand. So we have to play like really smart leading up to every surge fight and just hope for the best. So once we get past surge, the game really opens up for us. And now we get our Rosa raid, everybody. Very big, very nice. Any moves we can relearn? Venom Drench, Grassy Terrain could go so hard, actually. That could go so hard during surge. If we do that instead of Stun Spore, set up Grassy Terrain turn one, and then set up Toxic Spikes, holy shit, that could actually go so ham. Oh my God. So we'll lead with Roserade, we'll get uh, Toxic Spikes down, and see how it goes. I like this idea though. I really think this strat is gonna do a lot of work for us. Getting Toxic Spikes down guaranteed turn one is kind of crazy. If the Pinchurchin stays in, that would be great, but it's not gonna happen. They're most likely switching out turn one. The only thing I'm worried about is that we don't have a lot to handle the Raichu, but we do have Sucker Punch on two different Pokemon, plus Knock Off here, but I really don't want Flapjack to have to fight the Raichu. So the hope is that one of these three Pokemon will be available to fight the Raichu. All right. So electric terrain is gonna be set up immediately because of electric surge. It's also gonna eat a berry that boosts its defense, which doesn't do a lot for it here because I'm not using a physical attack. It is threatened by a one hit KO with Giga Drain. So we go for toxic spikes. I love that it stayed in. That's huge. That's actually so huge for us. Oh, beautiful. And a demon volt switch. Oh, that's so good for us. That is incredible, incredible. No paralysis either. 
we get double toxic spikes down, so now it's gonna be toxic poison anytime something switches in. And it stayed in, and we're gonna get all this health back. Uh, let's go grassy terrain. Yes, sir. Great start. Two sets of spike down plus electric terrain. Oh, and all that health back. <laughs> Beautiful. Now something has to switch in. So this can't get poisoned because it has levitate, but that's fine. That means we just have to get rid of Vika Volt now. It's likely going for a bug attack unless it tries to go for Volt Switch. Either way, Dilled Trio can switch in for free because it does not have a fire move, I believe. Not much we can do there. We can do Rock Tomb here and do a pretty good chunk of damage though, which should guarantee a kill for Jucifer. And then we'll still have Umbreon to handle Raichu later. It does have a berry, so I don't know for sure. Our IVs are bad, but if not, we should be able to take one hit at least here, especially after the special, uh, special attack drop. It doesn't switch out, which is good. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, excellent. So this is gonna kill Vika Volt, which is the biggest threat left. At this point, everything else cannot switch in safely without getting poisoned. So at that point, all we need to do is stall and we basically win this gym for free. So what we can do here is be super trolly and uh, just send in Cringion. By nasty plotting, it's basically guaranteeing that it gets shit on because I just have to spam Sucker Punch at that point and it's dead. It's not gonna be able to one-shot me. It might even kill itself here in confusion. Beautiful RNG, excellent RNG. We love that. Bolton comes in. It really doesn't have a lot that it can do against us. It is likely going for, I believe, Thunder Fang here. I don't know why I would go for anything else. There it is, Bolt Absorb, free switch in, and then we can go Confuse Ray. This does hurt quite a bit. Shouldn't one-shot. Ooh, not even close. Another turn of poison damage, plus Confuse Ray is up now. It likely goes for Psychic Fangs again, so we can just go into Cringion, get a free switch in. Do you see the vision, chat? Do you see the vision? Now we switch into the run, and what's gonna happen? It goes for Thunder Fang. And you know what's gonna happen? Is we're gonna heal all of that health back. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Lieutenant Surge, actual dingus. And another turn of poison damage, I see. What if we do a little bit of this? Maybe a little switch out. Imagine if Ash faced an opponent that did this in the anime. Dude, imagine. <laughs> if Ash had to deal with this, he would actually be raging. Like raging, raging. Volt switch. Oh, no. Oh, so unfortunate for you. So unfortunate for you. God, it's crazy you're about to use hidden power grass. Isn't that crazy? If only I had a Pokemon that could switch into a hidden power grass. Oh, the tragedy. We are just stalling for poison turns. Excellent. Because now we send in our ace in the hole, Hariyama. We smack it with Bulldoze and it's GG. If only you could survive a Bulldoze. What a free surge fight, dude. Roserade is just the goud for this fight. Now we know if we have Roserade for this fight, it's GG. If we have Swablu slash Altaria for Erica, it's GG. That is now two, and we know that Ludicolo is GG for Misty. So all three of those gyms, we know if we just get a certain Pokemon, it's basically free. What a huge dub. What a great way to kick off a fresh Radical Red run. All the way through Surge in one stream, and it was free, dude. Look at the EV training spreads, dude. Look at how much work I did, Chad. Did I work really hard? I actually spec'd into special defense this time with this because it's natural defense is already so fucking insane, dude. So we put a little bit into defense and then the rest into special defense. So it's a true bulky machine, dude. Also look at the money, dude. Look at all that money, 463,000 fucking dollars and also nuggets. We have 108 more nuggets. So we should be good on money for the time being. Chat, now might be a good time to tell you what the new rule is, by the way. The new rule that I came up with for the run. Hey, uh, Brassy Dudes from like maybe a year in the future. I don't know. Maybe I don't think it's like a full year, but it's been a while. It's almost five in the morning. Uh, just wanted to pop in and say that this is not the first of uh, the rule changes that happen throughout the run. I think we've already had one slight one before this. I can't quite remember, but this is not the first one. Uh, there are a couple more that are coming up that I'm just kind of warning you about that they don't at all make the challenge like easier. It just kind of cuts out the needless wipes. It cuts out the inability to like 
the game gets to the point where each like kind of bigger fight becomes so difficult to do blind. I explain it here after I'm cutting in here. I explain how the Sabrina fight kind of marks the beginning of the end when it comes to teams being even slightly predictable given like the gym that they're in. It basically got to the point where going against any new fight guaranteed that I wiped and had to restart a run, which didn't make it as fun. It made it kind of like, oh, we're just doomed every time we try to take on a new fight kind of a thing, which 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 was kind of a bummer. So it just makes things at least potentially doable. The rule that I talk about changing here is around what information I'm allowed to be given before like a really big fight, like a gym leader fight. Um, just to give you an example of what I end up talking about here, like this is a sticky note that I kept. Um, I kept a couple of sticky notes and uh, it's hard to read because my handwriting is actual dog, but essentially I was like, you guys can give me the types for the Pokemon that I'm going against. I don't want to know stats, movesets, anything like that. Just want to know what the typings of the Pokemon are. Uh, again, you can blame Sabrina's team in this game for that because what the hell is she doing with Crawdont, Porygon 2, Ursaluna? Like, hello? What are, what are we doing there? So yeah, you can see like, I don't want to foil too much here, but they would give me the typings here and then I would just start to brainstorm what potential Pokemon I might be up against and prepare for those. And sometimes I was correct in, you know, what I was preparing for, other times not. <laughs> and uh, certain things would kind of catch me off guard and I'd have to adjust, but uh, hopefully it doesn't come across as like, oh, this guy is just like throwing in the towel. That's not at all what happened here with any of the rule changes that you see. It was mainly a, I don't want to be playing this challenge for the next years of my life. I want to be able to do this within like a year of my life kind of a thing. So just, you know, that's what it's all about. I'm going to stop yapping. Um, oh, actually, I'm not quite done yapping yet because I did want to tell you guys really quickly, the YouTube channel just hit like the first stage of like monetization. Let's fucking go. Which means that like channel memberships are available. Uh, so if anybody i know people have like brought up before the idea of like oh i want to support you through patreon or anything like that for now if you would like to you know help fund the things that i do uh with content uh feel free to become a youtube member i've got three different tiers uh the first tier is only like 3.99 the second one is 7.99 and then there's like the third tier if you really want like 20.99 or I think it's $19.99, like, like 20 bucks. I also plan on doing some like YouTube streams at some point. So be on the lookout for that. Probably mo be mostly Pokemon related. Uh, I usually keep everything else, you know, still on the Twitch, but I'll, I'll probably I'll probably throw in a few YouTube streams here and there, you know, we'll, we'll figure something out for that. I'll give you guys more info soon, but just want to let you know, channel memberships are available. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love the support on the channel. Okay, enjoy the video. Thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> So because of the bullshit that we had to deal with um, during the Sabrina fight where she had multiple Pokemon that were just not even partially psychic in any capacity uh, and the fact that we can't just prepare for all 1,000 Pokemon, I came up with a new rule. And the new rule should still be pretty balanced without making things too easy. So the new rule is that before gym battles, you are allowed to tell me what types I'm going to be going against. That is the only information you are allowed to give me ahead of time is what types we're gonna go against. I don't wanna know specifically what Pokemon. I don't, know what, I don't wanna know what moves they have. I just need to know what types I'm up against because I, there's no way I can prepare for every single type of every single Pokemon that's in the game in every single fight every gym battle. There's just, there's no way. I, we're just gonna end up with every run dying to a new gym leader where we just went in without any info and we were dead. So that is the, the updated rule. And I think that is about as balanced as we can make it while still keeping it mostly blind. If you spoil what is coming up in a gym, you unfortunately get permanently banned for life and you're never allowed to return. Also, I'm just kidding, but also you will probably get timed out. <laughs> Erica fight. We have been able to consistently get past her the last couple of runs. Assuming her AI does the same thing it did last time we fought her. She should stay in with Rillaboom here and spam Grassy Surge. And we are going to set up a Dragon Dance.
So we have set up four dragon dances, um, which means we're at plus four attack and plus four speed. So we are going to now start attacking with dual wing beat and we should be able to sweep most of her team. We will see how it goes. This dude has a giant dildo for a hair. Like, come on, man. Just hitting him with a big dild. Okay, Superior comes in and it will meet a similar fate here because we dual wing beat to break the focus sash and then kill it with the second hit. That is the scariest Pokemon she has. So killing it now is excellent. This is why for those that were here for the last Radical Red stream, I was so hyped when we saw a Swablu because Altaria is basically just a free win against Erica. Meganium, uh, it has this thing that raises its defense here and then Ancient Power will kill us, but we just dual wing beat anyways and we just use the rest of our Pokemon to finish off the rest of her team. Or sorry, she went for Dazzling Gleam instead, actually. We actually might live. Oh, we didn't live. At this point, it doesn't really matter what we do. We just go for Venoshock. The last Pokemon is Hishun Electrode, which because it can't explode, it doesn't really have anything here except for Hidden Power Ice, which will not one-shot us because we have good special defense. And Venoshock should be enough to mostly kill. Oh, she just gave up. <laughs> she just gave up and used Explosion. We take those. Beautiful. It was that easy. Easy Erica fight because her AI is apparently really dumb and doesn't actually switch Rillaboom out for some reason. Oh, oh, that's right. It's, um, they give us a, it's like a radical red form of a Pokemon. This is a Clauncher, but it's like a different looking Clauncher. It looks kind of cool. It looks like a hunter from Halo. It's a bug dark type. That would have been really cool for Erica. But actually, this is kind of good for maybe Sabrina. If it's fast enough. Mega Launcher. Boosts aura and pulse moves by 50%. Maybe actually good. This is what he has. He has a Sheer Force Nido King, which basically means that um, all of his attacks are going to be extra powerful because of that ability. Haunch Crow is a pretty big pain in the ass. It has this ability called Super Luck, which makes it more likely to hit critical hits. And it has an item that makes it even more likely to hit critical hits, which basically guarantees uh, a critical hit anytime it attacks, which is cringe. And then this Kangaskhan is an issue because it is, it, it can mega evolve. When this thing mega evolves, it becomes very strong. And also it hits once with like the mama Kangaskhan and then the little guy in its pouch also hits for 50% of the power for the attack that it uses, which basically means that every move it uses hits one and a half times basically. But we have beaten this fight before. I feel pretty confident in our team. Our Inteleon is gonna one shot the Nido King if it stays in, if it switches out, something is gonna have to switch into, which is gonna be Rotom. It's gonna have to switch into a Scald, which is gonna hurt it pretty badly. It is time. We're gonna see how this goes. Hopefully we don't lose the run here. I have a feeling we should be fine. This is the first of like four really difficult fights that aren't even gym leaders. So hopefully this goes all right. So this is where we scald. It actually stayed in, that's huge. We get a free kill on Nidoking. Rotom comes in, which is totally fine. What we do here is we protect to make sure that it's going for Volt Switch instead of Freeze Dry. Okay, it's going for Freeze Dry, which means we can very safely U-turn here. Because it's going for Freeze Dry, we should be able to freely go into Drusifer here because we will outspeed. This Rotom kill is really big for us because this thing is super trolly. Now I believe Kangaskhan's gonna come in. Honchcrow, that's actually preferable. It is going for Sucker Punch. That should be a free switch in then. Okay, it did not go for a Sucker Punch again. That is unfortunate, but we do get a Toxic here. I kind of want to protect for a turn just to see what it's going to go for. Okay, it's still going for Drill Pack, which is fine. We're going to Toxic this turn. Umbreon is going to get down to low HP. We're going to Toxic. We're going to Protect for a turn to get some free damage. And then hopefully that's going to be enough for Ice Beam to come in and kill it. So now the play is simply to send in Barrow here because we are going to outspeed. Ice Beam should kill if it stays in. If it doesn't stay in, then we might break a Focus Sash. Excellent. Huge kill on Honchkrow. Kangaskhan is going to be a problem. Uh, we are going to protect because I imagine it's going for fake out here. So we got rid of the fake out turn. Now it is going to be going for, I believe, power up punch. 
Uh, we are going to want to U-turn here. Assuming it is going for power up punch, the safest bet is to go into Gyarados here. And then here we just need to protect to see what it's going for. Okay, it is once again going for power up punch. So we can go for Dragon Dance here to potentially make the rest of this fight really easy. It is going to be at plus four attack after this, which is why we're going to protect on this next turn, just to make sure that it's not going for a stronger move. So this is where we go for Aqua Tail, do some massive damage. Even if it doesn't kill, it's fine. Mostly just to get massive damage. This might, this should kill. That's fine, because now Flapjack is going to come in and finish it off. I actually don't know if we survive this attack. Let's see. Do we survive a body slam one and a half times? I don't think so. That is what Flapjack was for anyways. Uh, the, the game just made it a little easier on us. Holy shit, it actually lived. Unfortunate. <laughs> we just scald here. Finish it off. Right here, we simply protect again, just to see what it's going for. I imagine it's Swords Dance. It goes for close combat like an idiot, which means we are going to go for... Just to guarantee the win, we're going to go U-turn here, and we're going to go into Ian Chad. The reason we U-turn there is to break its Focus Sash. Now uh, we can just stay in and try to do some damage, because it's going to be at minus two defense here. So dual wing beat should be enough here, I imagine. Oh yeah, plenty. Plenty of damage. Good. Smooth, smooth Giovanni fight. That was good. Honestly, the AI kind of threw in that fight, so that was actually really good. Ooh, Bug Buzz is huge on this guy. Yes. Oh, look at this. That's a sick looking Glotzer. And it learns Aura Sphere. Oh, this thing is sick, dude. Oh, we don't even need Swords Dance. This thing is actually sick. Pretty, like, respectable bulk as well. It's that typing. Bug Dark is sick on this thing. What's the next big challenge for the run? So currently the next big challenge we have is the rival in Silphco. Everything else before that is pretty simple. There's like a one Marowak that we have to kill, which we're going to be totally fine against. And then we have two Team Rocket fights after that, all of which we might be able to get through tonight. This should actually be pretty free, if I had to guess. Should be pretty free. So Raptor comes in and is going to get absolutely pissed. <laughs> pissed on it actually switched out it's electivire right yes so electivire still has to eat a thunderbolt from a jolteon which is really funny and it still does massive damage i am a little concerned if it goes for close combat that dild trio just dies so i think the best option here is to switch into bagel who will take neutral damage from an electric attack and also intimidate it which will also give us an opportunity to protect and then see what it's going to go for. So that is, I think, the best play here. It did go for close combat, which is good. That's actually good. Because now it will go for Ice Punch. Let me protect just to see what it goes for. Because it is a flying, or it is a uh, fighting type in this game. It is going for Ice Punch. The problem is if I go into Dild Trio, they still have two Pokemon that can swap into that for free. And do I have any way to punish that? Not really. I get so focused when you're in fights. Especially big fights, because big fights we have to play really smart. So we have to consider, if we go into Dill Trio, we're going to take an Ice Punch, and then it is likely going to switch into Star Raptor or the Jump Luff, which means we can't just spam Earthquake here and get away with it. The smarter move here would be to go into Drusifer, eat the Ice Punch, and then I think we just use Flamethrower. Let me protect, just to see what it's actually going for. It's probably Plasma Fist, right? Volt Switch. It's going for Volt Switch. Okay. So if it's going for Volt Switch here, we are going to hit it with Scorch Sands. Oh, it's faster. Wait, how? Wait, how is it faster? I don't know. I Oh, huge burn, though. That's a huge burn. Wait, it's actually massive. Actually a huge play. That actually worked. That was good. That was actually good. Water Pulse is fine here because we're just going to protect Still does quite a bit of damage, but we have leftovers. So we're just going to tank down this burn damage just a little bit. It is going for Shell Smash, which is a little scary. Attack sharply rises, special attack rises, speed rises. So what we need to do here is go for a ballsy play and just do as much damage with Aqua, Twi Ugh, Aqua Tail as we can. It's going to go for Shell Smash again. This is going to bring Blastoise down to probably... 25% of its health, especially after that defense drop. 
Oh, we just kill it. Never mind. That's even better. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that it just went for a second shell smash. What a throw. That was good. It goes for U-turn. Basically a free switch in for Bagel because we're going to heal all that health back. And now something has to switch in. That's beautiful. And now we get a protect turn to see what it's actually going to go for. It's going for U-turn itself. Beautiful. So this is basically a free turn to just attack it. Every time they use your turn, we're just healing that back with leftovers. Jump Pluff comes in. Interesting. It's an interesting play. So what we're going to do here is protect to see what it's going for. Goes for double edge. Nice. So because of double edge, we are just going to go for damage here with dual wing. It's f oh, that's right. It is faster. That's true. That's actually fine, though. I forgot that it is faster than my Salamence. But we have a faster Ice Beam here. So this thing dies in one hit. Sends in Star Raptor to Intimidate. Doesn't matter. We have Ice Beam to finish it off. Easy kill. Darmanitan comes in. We scald. GG. Easy peasy. So what's going to happen in this double battle chat is I get to pick three of my Pokemon to bring into the fight. Uh, and then I have to rely on the AI to also bring in three Pokemon that are decent. Um, it's, it gets kind of wacky and wild, but we are going to bring in Hunter. We're going to bring in Gyarados. And we're going to bring in Drusy, I believe. I think the best course of action here is to bug buzz the Gothitelle regardless. Because it got a special attack boost from that Intimidate, and we need to get it off the field. That actually didn't kill it, which is really unfortunate. What is this? Okay, neutral. God damn, okay. Uh, we now need to U-turn the Gothitelle, I think. Because we're probably going to get hit with a fire attack here. We just go into Gyarados here. So this is a big Scald from Masquerade. Killing the Incineroar there is huge. Yeah, this should one-shot. So now Gyarados' role has been filled. If we can get a little bit more value out of it, that'd be great. Nice. Huge. All right, we're going to protect here. Let Masquerade hopefully kill Primarina. And then the one on the left is going to be down to... Ooh, it didn't actually kill. Unforge. Free kill on Primarina. Masquerade's probably going to do some chip damage to Aegislash with Giga Drain, I imagine. Oh, one for Bug Buzz. Nice. Ooh, and the special defense drop is nice. We actually might be able to save Gyarados a little bit longer here. We're down to just Mawile and Aegislash. Mawile is going to Mega Evolve, which is going to double Intimidate us. So we're going to eat the double Intimidate with a Protect here. I think at this point, we need to let Gyarados just die. Because it can't really do much else for us here. So we're going to just go for a little bit of damage here. It's just some sort of chip damage. Actually, not bad. Ooh, nice Scald as well. Mawile actually went for Masquerade here. That's good. That forces another Pokemon out. That's going to be a little bit better. And that gives me another two turns with Gyarados as well, which is good. So Sceptile is going to come in. It's going to Mega Evolve, and this Mawile is going to play rough the fuck out of it. So we need to get Aegislash off the field here. Hopefully, Sceptile doubles into the Aegislash. It just used King's Shield, so we should be good here. Hidden Power. Nice. Okay, huge. So Sceptile's going to die from Play Rough here, but we're going to get some big uh, chip damage on the Mawile. That's a good. Oh, it went for a kill on me. That's even better, actually. Please kill me. Nice. This is a guaranteed dub, dude. GG. Very nice. Easy fight, dude. So free. Now, chat, the last battle for the night is Giovanni Part 2. Chat, let me give you an idea of what we're up against here. It's actually not that bad. So he leads with Hippowdon um, and sets up a Sandstorm that is going to last eight turns. The problem with that is that that Sandstorm is going to make Sand Rush Excadrill, which doubles the speed in a Sandstorm, and Sand Veil Garchomp, which makes its evasion higher, uh, it makes both of them pretty big threats. Because Garchomp is such an insanely good Pokemon, we have to be really careful here. Thankfully, our Inteleon counters multiple Pokemon here. It will one-shot Hippowdon just fine. 
and it should one-shot both of these Pokemon okay. Thankfully, the Garchomp's best attack against Gyarados is Rock Slide. So in the event that Inteleon doesn't just, you know, clap all of them, uh, we should have a, a Gyarados that can switch in and intimidate the Garchomp to take it out. We also have our um, Salamence. The problem there is that this is technically, Garchomp is faster than Salamence. So we can't just switch in for free there. It's gonna be a little bit of a, an issue. Um, Poltegeist is not really a concern. As long as we hit it with something physical, like Crunch or something, we should be fine. And then Kangaskhan is the same Kangaskhan as before. So we're just gonna do the best we can. Here we go, everybody. Uh, we need to lead with Inteleon to one-shot the Hippowdon before it can set up Stealth Rocks and then deal with whatever comes next. Big fight, everybody, a big fight. If you're wondering, the mega evolved Pokemon that he has is in fact still Kangaskhan. It is not Garchomp. We learned that last time. We go for Scald here to not even let it set up any sort of Stealth Rock business. Oh my God, it survived on one HP and it went for Earthquake. That is tragic. Does that kill? Wow, that is really unfortunate, man. Unreal cringe. Thankfully, we have backup plans. The fact that that Hippowdon didn't die to a super effective Wise Glasses, Max IV, Max EV invested. Literally, if I if I leveled up Inteleon one more time before this battle, it actually would have killed. That's crazy. We swap in Bagel. We are then going to protect when the next Pokemon comes in to waste a turn. My hope is that it sends in Garchomp. That or like Excadrill, but preferably not Excadrill. It is Excadrill, unfortunately. Now we do have Brick Break here. The problem is it is going to be very fast and use Rock Slide. So what we need to do is stall out another turn of Sandstorm with Protect to guarantee that it is going for Rock Slide. Oh, yuck. Oh no. Why did you go for Swords Dance? Oh, yuck. Okay. No, it's not cooked. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think our only path forward, unfortunately, is to let Bagel die. But we need a free switch in for Gyarados. So we got the Intimidate off, which means it might go for a Swords Dance here. Um, this is, in fact, a Focus Sash Exadrill. So we have to figure out how to break Sash here and then also kill it. Again, this is why having Inteleon alive would be really helpful because we would have had U-turn here. Sandstorm's gonna have another couple turns. Once Sandstorm is out though, we should be okay. It's gonna go for Rock Slide here, which isn't Stab. Assuming at Oko's, the only shot you got is Ice Fang for a very rare Freeze or Flinch. Well, what I'm thinking is, because I Intimidated, that Swords Dance is now gone. So it's back to its normal attack stat, which means it's either going to go for a Swords Dance here, or it's going to go for Rock Slide for damage. Either way, it's going to outspeed me. So the play is to either Protect with Gyarados to waste another Sandstorm turn, or Attack and hope that it went for Swords Dance. So then I can then protect on the next turn and then hopefully Sandstorm will be done by then. This is turn four of Sand or there's four turns left of Sand. I don't know what that actually means. I will say Cringion is the most expendable of all the Pokemon we still have right now as far as for this fight goes. Smartest play here is go into Cringion, hope that it goes for Rock Slide. So no Swords Dance means that we tank this relatively fine. I then imagine it's going to go for a Swords Dance here or maybe an Earthquake. What we do here is we protect this turn. Actually, yeah, we protect this turn just in case it's going for Earthquake. If it goes for Swords Dance, we switch back into Gyarados and do that. Okay, that's great. Two turns of Sand down, two more to go. Because it's going for Earthquake, we switch back into Gyarados, who will then dodge the Earthquake. Another attack drop means that its Rock Slide is now going to be minus two it likely would go for a swords dance here what i can do is do i dare go for dragon dance it's at minus two no we need to make sure this thing dies okay it went for swords dance this is fine it's now going to be back to its normal attack stat we do ice fang for the damage sandstorm is over it is now slower than me it should be 
I'm aware Aqua Tail is stronger. I was trying to break the sash. That's all that was. I was. Trying to break the sash and maybe get a lucky freeze. So what we do here is to play it absolutely safe. We go back into Cringion. We are going to tank that. Barely. <laughs> And I do mean barely. We're going to protect for another turn to get another little bit of healing. Unfortunately, we are not fast enough to outspeed this thing. It is going to go for Rock Slide. Unless it just goes for Earthquake. That'd be nice. If we swap into Gyarados, we have to eat the hit. We have to lose Cringy on here or just go for Moonlight. That's really our only play, unfortunately. Either way, this guarantees a kill for either either of these Pokemon, because our base speed is faster with Hunter. We're going to Aura Sphere and finally kill Exadrill. Okay, Garchomp comes in, but the sand is not up anymore. It is likely going to go for a Rock Slide here, and it is faster than me. Flapjack should be able to tank. Really the only play we have right now. It went for Scale Shot, which is incredibly cringe. Oh, goodness. Why did you go for that instead of a super effective Rock Slide, man? Okay, its defense gets lowered, which is good, but its speed goes up, which is kind of whatever. We just we just have to close combat, I think. I think that kills us. Yeah. This is basically our only play here. We got an Intimidate off on it, which is good, because that gives us a chance to survive a Rock Slide. What we have to do here, the problem is that its speed got raised, which means Dragon Dance won't allow me to outspeed. We have to Ice Fang and hope that this doesn't kill. No! Fuck off, man! Fuck off with the flinch, dude. Oh, you're so cringe. I have to protect. Oh, I have to protect. Oh my god, man. Alright, hopefully we don't flinch again. But rough skin is just going to hurt us anyways. That's a GG, man. Oh my god, this game is such a joke. It's such a fucking joke, man. It gets two flinches, man. Like, what can you do? We lost to RNG, dude. We lost to a double flinch, man. Like, what can you even do? What can you even do? Oh, man. Part of our problem is that we didn't have any priority. I did not make it so that way we had any moves that actually had priority. So we just got outsped, installed with Pokemon that aren't really designed to stall, and got clapped, unfortunately. I just really... I don't like losing runs before we even get back to our PB. When we lose runs to things that we've already beaten, especially something like that that we first tried, oh, that just pisses me off. To be fair, it was our first, uh, or I guess our second time even getting that far, so it is what it is. We haven't done those fights a million times like all the other ones, so we just had some pretty good encounters that run. It's really unfortunate, but we also choked a couple encounters, so wasn't necessarily a perfect run, but it was a good one. It's very unfortunate.